Hi folks, how are you doing? <sighs> I'm sorry, I didn't shave, I didn't put a new shirt on, I didn't put a tie on, I didn't get all decked out to be some special person to speak to you tonight. Uh, I got a bad head cold. What happened was a dear sister of mine, uh, who I highly respect, uh, I'm dealing with a few issues in the Old Testament I'm having troubles with. It. She, she gave me two pages of verses to look up and study them out for myself. And that's the way you elaborate with people. That's the best way is here. Take this in your own time and your own speed. Work on this. So I thought tonight I feel sick. Uh, I probably got a sinus infection or something. It hasn't gone away. Uh, and uh, it's kind of nice to be able to just study out someone else's teaching and not do all the work all the time. You get tired of that, you know. And so, but I got down to one verse in Job, and <laughs> I couldn't get past that verse. And then I started looking up something else, and you know how you get on a rabbit trail. And I've shared this on my other videos that years ago, three years, whatever, for who knows how long it's been now, that I really felt impressed that the Father said there's a famine of His Word. And it's like, with all the media and all the outlets and all the TV things, how can there possibly be a famine of your word? And so that has been my journey. My whole journey is to figure out what that means, how does it apply to my life, and what do I do to share it with others? Well, tonight as we're going along, I'm also watching, you know, some of the YouTube stuff. You know how you get hooked on YouTube sometime. And, and uh, watching the state of our country and the state of this and that going on and all these different things. Tonight, when uh, I, uh, I've been asking the Father, what can I do? You know, I feel like I'm not ministering to people. I feel that people who are in ministry are going, we're helping people and stuff, and we're, lead, we're lying to them, but our church is growing, and we're, we're, they're all doing pretty good. You know, we don't really care what you think or what the, the Old Testament says or what the laws say or any of that other stuff, you know. And stuff and so uh, and I know I, I think of people who say well Marty you you look like you're getting down on others but you know what when you put people's souls in your hands and you share with them and teach them you are responsible for it their blood your blood is on my shoulders what I share and what I don't share and what I do and how I live I take that responsibility very very heavily it's not a light thing for me and so this last few years of journey is searching out so I can rightly show what is my Heavenly Father's words and what is not His words. And this tonight is what clicked. I told you sometimes things just have to click with me. I'm a little slow sometimes. But as I'm going along, I realize something. What does this book say on here? If you can read it, Almost every book I have says Holy Bible. I don't have, I got a Holy Interlinear, I got a Aramaic, I've got a Hebrew Bible, but every Bible says either Interlinear Bible or Holy Bible or something like that. I don't have a single book that says God's Word on the cover of it. And that finally clicked to me tonight that we need to return to the Holy Bible. We need to return to the Holy Bible. Now here's what I'm, ex I, I, I'm expressing. This is where I think I've gone wrong in the past. And this is how I think a lot of people are doing the same thing I used to do. Holy means set apart, hollowed. The Bible is writings, so set apart writings. Now listen to this. When a person changes the words and claims that the Holy Bible, in any translation, is the authoritative, absolute, absolute Word of God, they now are allowing themselves to pick and choose anything out of these writings and tack on its total authority of God's own spoken words. Did you hear that? How many of us have sat there, well, this is, I, I, don't want to th I don't want you to think I'll make it up. It's right here in God's Word. Even though it's not spoken by God, 
I'm going to show you some illustrations in the end. I'm going to read that again. When a person changes the words and claims that the Holy Bible in any translation is the authoritative, absolute word of God, they now are allowing themselves to pick and choose anything out of these writings and tack on its total authority as God's own spoken words. Just my past, yesterday, my pastor said, I don't want you to, to uh, my old pastor said, hey, look, look, I don't want you to think I'm making this stuff up. This is God's word. Well, what he read wasn't God's word. It did not say, thus says the Lord. It was by another person. Let's, let's continue. They now, they now this, is, now, this is way back. I mean, everything you search for God's word goes way back to the 1600s, 1300s. I mean, way, way, way back. They now have the authoritative freedom to claim, the authoritative freedom to claim inspiration on any author or writing in the Holy Bible and teach it as God's spoken word. I could pick anything out of here and say this is God's inspired, spoken, absolute word. Now I'm going to show you where Satan speaks in this book. He speaks many times. You think Satan's words is God's words? Who then can challenge that? It says it is God's word. See, that's the problem. We're debating back and forth, author to author, until we break through this blindness. Until you and I are willing to acknowledge that this is set apart writings. We're not going to get anywhere. Because we're claiming every single thing in here is the authoritative word of God. Even when the, can the canon has been changed multiple times, many books have been taken out. The danger, this is serious guys, this is so serious. The danger of people pointing to any writing and saying this is God's word is that any writing that is contrary to God's own spoken words are mixed in with the leaven and lost. Anyone who puts this canon together, anywhere, anyhow, any translation, can be mixing in something that we don't know about. But because we are blinded by calling it the God's word, we, are in, we won't believe what it actually says. That's what gets me. You and I did not believe what it said. We picked and choose all the time, and we didn't even realize we are doing it. This is scary. People reject the very words in the Holy Bible of the Most High simply because words spoken by others and recorded are mixed in with God's true words. We can't distinguish who said what. We think all the authors are inspired. We think every word is spoken from the very mouth and inspired by the God. That's what we're taught. How can we distinguish anything of right and wrong and true? People, even when I show them contradictions, black and white, absolute opposites, they reject it because this is the authoritative word of God. You've blinded yourself because you don't believe what the Holy Bible says. Calling everything in the Holy Bible God's word blinds those who are unlearned and do not know how to distinguish between his own words and man's or the scribe's words added in translation. We can't even distinguish between the stuff, between what language and what's not language. We have to go to our concordances. we got to go and look up back things. We don't even realize by going to the concordance and finding out what the correct translation or the correct word is, is, is verifying that this is not the authoritative, authorized word of God. Because it's got an incorrect word. Which translation is correct? Which translation is the word of God? They all have variations. <coughs> thus, thus it is easy to reject the most, the words of the Most High, simply by changing the name of the Holy Bible. We change the Holy Bible and call it God's Word to hide 
any tests he may put in there, to hide any perfections that are in there, to hide any deceptions, because our security lies in that statement, that ideology. Didn't Yeshua, our Lord Jesus, warn the Pharisees that in this book you think you have eternal life, but it points to me? This book is a book of writings, holy, set apart. And in it, you're going to see, thus says the Lord. Justin Martyr, I always go by him. I got some of his books and writings up there. All we know is when he says, thus says the Lord, that is God's word. For a while, I've been seeking and asking what I personally can do to help others see the Most High's words. When I finally realized there is a famine of his word, and with all the outlets of Bible teachings, I have gone to see that changing the name has changed what was said in the holy book of the writings. Father, how do we help get the blindness away? We change the definitions, we change the history, we alter stuff. We put it so authoritative high that no regular person can possibly question it. What do we got to do? We got to go back to the name of the book, the Holy Bible, the set apart writings. I'm going to purpose from now on not to use the Word of God unless it states it or unless our Messiah states what he's saying is from the Father. Let's make a note here. Why is our country the way it is? Why is our country, look at everything that's going on. This is what got me thinking here. Because they change the meanings and the names of things. They change the meanings and names. Years ago, we changed it to the authorized Word of God, the authorized King James. We lift this Bible up higher than what our Heavenly Father is. We don't follow Him and His voice. We follow some words of someone written in a book that we were told is canon. The modern church today cannot even read what is on the cover of the very book they go by, the Holy Bible. They don't want to go by that. Oh, Marty, this is the inerrant word of God. we got to go by everything that's in here. Really? No, no, I'm not dead yet. Paul was a master. As I read his, has read his books from looking from the outside in, Paul was a master attacking on the name of Jesus Christ to give whatever he said authority. I watch these street preachers, oh, the Lord called me here. Ooh, that trumps those other people. I don't believe the Lord called them there. Not the way they're acting. Not the false grace teaching they're teaching. That's not the Yahweh that I know. Paul understood as a Pharisee how to alter one word or leave out one verse to change the meaning to fit his own desired outcome. People who translated the Bible wanted to meet their own desired outcome. I got a whole list here, but I'm not going to go through all this. Job 1, 7, verse 7b, Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro the earth and from walking up and down. Is that God's word? Is that his word? Verse 9, then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his, his, uh, how, whatever it is, <coughs> I should run it, <coughs> and all that he has and everything inside of it? Or even through, through the Gospels here, Mark 5, 7, and crying out with a loud voice, what have you to do with us, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I adjure you by God. I, I adjure you by God. Do not torment me. That's not God's word. That's Satan talked to the Yeshua. All through this, the book of Job, two pages, two pages here. It goes from one guy to the next guy to Job's re reply to this. And at the very, very end, at the very end, the Most High, I call him Most High just so because I like that name, or Most High. I lost my thought, my place, sir. Oh, 
verse four, chapter 42, verse 7, after the Lord spoke these words to Job, the Lord said to this guy, the termite guy, <laughs> whatever his last name is, 42, 7b and 8, for you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. You have not spoken. The words they spoke is not, three quarters of Job is not God's word. Prove this wrong. I have the most highest words right here. He says that. He says that. My heavenly father Yahweh says to his friends, those are not my words. And he was going to take them out. But Job was going to pray and sacrifice for them. Pilate, Luke 23, 4. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no guilt in this man. That's not God's word. That's Pilate's words. He's the authority of that time. It's important to know in the Bible, in the Holy Bible, that the authorities of that day found no prop, no guilt in him. They didn't want the Most High to say that. They needed him to say it, to verify it. And the blind man said to the rabbi, let me recover my sight. There's so many verses through here, people. Return to the Holy Bible. Look who said it and who they said it to. Look and study it out. Compare it with the different authors. Do you, this is what gets me, guys and gals. Look at the Old Testament. People think God is a Santa Claus in the New Testament. No, he's not. He's still testing us. He said in Deuteronomy 13, I will allow someone to do signs and wonders and great things in front of you to test you. Are you going to follow my words and my laws? I'm going back to the Bible. I want to follow what the Holy Bible says. I'm getting so tired of all this debating stuff. Because nobody wants to believe what the Most High says. They want to take out of the Bible what is God's word and use it for my grace and my easy believism and all that other stuff. You want to do what's desirable. Your desired outcome. Do you want to do what is your desired outcome or do you want to follow what the Most High says? He says, follow my words. Fear me. Repent. Look to me. Praise the Lord. I felt like tonight, as sick as I felt, as bad as I felt, that it's like, Lord, why do you always got to do this when I'm sick? It's like the light goes on. It's like, this is the answer I've been looking for several weeks. What, what is missing, Lord? What am I missing? He says, it's right here in front of you, the Holy Bible. It doesn't say God's word. Father, you are so incredibly awesome. Because you want us to search for you with all our hearts and minds. I am so grateful. I am so humble, Lord. Please, Father, speak and open people's eyes. You long, you don't want people to perish, Lord. You want them to follow your words, not what man says is your words. Help us to return to your truths. In Yeshua's name, amen.